Hey guys, welcome to another David Zimbaletta. In today's video, I have this 2008 Sprinter here. Due to unfortunate situation, this Sprinter is here and it's going to be a very expensive repair. Not that my cost is expensive, the parts are crazy, crazy expensive. So let me show you actually what's going on and we're gonna actually take this Sprinter apart and put it back together. <laughs> So take a look at this guys. Can you see what's going on here? No fan shroud. And that's because a lot of times I've noticed people have these fan shrouds here and you know, they got them zip tied. This was not the case. And they're broken up and they're just kind of like in here and everybody thinks, you know, that's just fine. They continue driving just like that is. But in this situation, that did not work out. That fan shroud dropped down onto the fan, breaking down all the fan blades and, and in the process shooting one of the fan blades into the radiator uh, busting a hole now all of these parts are real expensive especially if you need basically you need it now basically to get everything fixed you don't have time to be waiting for all this stuff so now this is what i'm going to be doing i'm going to basically replace the radiator replace the fan replace the belt because it also damaged that driver belt right there I'm also gonna replace three pulleys. So, guys, stay tuned, and uh, we're gonna replace. We're gonna do this real quick. So the bumper has been removed, the grill has been removed, the light have been separated, uh, the things underneath the lights was also removed. Now stuff you have to notice when you're taking stuff apart is like damages like this. I certainly don't want to be blamed for breaking all this stuff. Also this light was not attached over here um, to that little portion. So a lot of the stuff you know when you get in your 2008 can be busted up. Uh, also, one thing to note, this little line is missing, it's blocked off, and same thing here, that little line is missing as well, should be kind of going down there, so things like that, so I'm going to replace everything as it is, and definitely let my customer know those things are missing. So guys, I made some mental notes, I took some pictures and stuff, uh, there's a little pipe, I actually have one of those on my 2012 um, so I'm thinking about maybe finding a similar type of line and just go ahead and fix that for the customer at no charge uh, as far as this one goes it's a different style radiator 2012 does not have this other line here so maybe this is why somebody tapped it off so what we're gonna do next is uh, go ahead and actually separate uh, uh, this radiator support from everything else push it back a little bit and go ahead and actually get into and uh, replace the radiator and stuff so we're also going to go ahead and separate all this and and this little locking mechanism So the radiator support has been disassembled. A uh, couple things to note. So you got this bolt to disassemble, uh, that one right there, two more right there, one on the side. Same thing goes here. One of them is gonna go there, two right there, one over there, and one over there. So one more thing that I've noticed since I'm actually taking this airbox apart, you see that? That's missing. 
it's right over here. So I'll actually replace that for the customer, put it exactly where it's supposed to be. I also noticed some of the other stuff is missing here. Some of the brackets, but it's okay. Um, I'm gonna do best we can to make it look right. draining the radiator fluid as you can see that's all we got because it does not have any fluid due to the busted radiator but if you are trying to drain fluid the drain plug is located right here there's like a little twisty tab which i will show you what it looks like it's actually located right here that's what it looks like twist it out it will drain the water uh also guys i'm using this to you know keep track of all the bolts step by step as I'm kind of working. So we got all the bumper bolts here and license plate bolts. And then it goes on to the grill and radio support bolts and so on and so forth. So next, what we must do is actually separate the transmission lines uh, from the radiator, which is right here and right there. This will actually cause some water will leak. Some transmission fluid will come out. Um, and I need to put a bucket right there. So I'll also have a bucket I'm still catching any water that's going to be coming out because we will have a little bit more water, uh, obviously. Um, to, to disconnect the uh, transmission lines is 19. And uh, this little plasticky piece is going to be really, really close. So you will not be able to get any tool underneath. So just take a, take a wrench, stick it underneath and pry this off. Same thing for the bottom. Uh, also... The radiator hoses are disconnected, so that's disconnected. Uh, the one in the bottom, the way it disconnects is you gotta pull uh, that little tab, it's metal. You gotta pull it up, disconnect. It's not easy, but once you pull it up, it will actually release that radiator pipe. Of course, there's no room to obviously do this really easily, but it's okay, it's manageable. So uh, another radiator hose is right here that we disconnected. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. I'm not going to really make a video about that just yet because it's just really not necessary. Another way to disconnect the transmission lines is actually uh, pulling out the metal pin that holds this transmission line in place and then it's going to cause it to pop out. Um, here's that little metal pin. Simply take something like this and pop it out of there. I uh, just done one. I got to do the one at the bottom. So it is not necessary for me to actually uh, remove the bolts uh, unless they're not included on the other radiator that i'm actually installing so next step i need to disconnect uh the ac condenser from the actual radiator uh there's the tabs for this so it inserts over here and you just have to simply uh, press it with your finger slide it up um and it's that little tab that goes in it that little tab uh it also locks in over here with this little tab and that just simply goes in. So you wanna make sure when you're installing the AC condenser that you slide the bottom and the top at the same time. Same thing for here, I have removed that. I've removed this tab slightly. It's uh, still hanging towards the top. And that's because it's catching on a lot of this metal components here, because I gotta get them out of the way. But what I'm gonna try to do is take that bolt out for the intercooler and that bolt out for the intercooler and see if I could get the radiator out of there. Alright, so guys, this is what we have so far. So the radiator is out, it's right there. I was actually able to pull it out with uh, the radiator support still kind of being, you know, close. Uh, however, this was still kind of like in my way. Uh, just one bolt that's out of the way. I've disconnected some electrical components like from here, which is that one right there. And in this situation, I kind of thought, you know what? Save myself just a little bit of time, put the radiator support to the side. Go ahead and actually uh, get to this fan and I'm gonna go ahead and remove it and then replace it uh, with another fan and fan clutch also I'm going to be removing 
that serpentine belt and replacing that as well. I do want to give you guys a little close up on this so you could actually see kind of like what I'm doing. So that's actually coming up next in a normal type of video, not a time lapse. And as you can see, here's the intercooler. I love that connected. It simply um, uses very long bolts to bolt up to the bottom of the radiator. If you don't remove those bolts, you will not be able to remove the radiator. Uh, and of course, as already explained, this radiator support, uh, I mean, this AC condenser slides in into the radiator. I decided not to disconnect these lines. However, I could do that if I want. Um, but kind of decided to do it like this for now. I mean, it was just like one little step. I could have disconnected that little wire and uh, pull it right out and that'd be it. But I really don't need any more room because as soon as I replace this, everything's going back. Uh, we will also gonna be replacing this fuel filter. Uh, also, while I'm at it, I'm gonna disconnect uh, that little bolt, inspect uh, the seal for the turbo, uh, making sure that my customer is not gonna have any issues uh, down the road. That's just something I'm throwing in for free. Um, as far as uh, this resonator here, I could see that the bolts are in place. I could see the seal is nice and tight. Everything is looking good right here, so I'm leaving that alone. And uh, yeah, so let's so, continue. Anyways, guys. Here's where we're at so far. So we have the new fan. That's what it's supposed to look like. And we have the old fan right there with the fan clutch. Now you might be wondering, should we replace this fan clutch um, and or, or a fan? So Mercedes sells fan clutch with a fan together. And it's best that you actually install it together, just like that. But take a look at the spring here for the fan clutch, which is a mechanical type, type of fan clutch. And then take a look at the spring which one you think is actually going to perform to keep the engine cool? This one or that one? Write in the comments below, guys. What do you think? See if you know the answer. Guys, for removing the fan, this is what I'm gonna be using. Uh, this wrench goes up to 300 millimeter or 12 inches. So let's try to actually go behind it and see if we could remove it. I believe you have to remove that like by actually clockwise all right guys so for removing the fan clutch you gotta go clockwise I don't have the locking tool so I'm gonna use my flat head and I'm gonna use a hammer so I'm gonna put it on the edge there and see if I could actually knock it knock it out of the place Okay, so that has released it. Before actually doing that, I sprayed some twister on here and that works just fine. By trying to put a wrench on it without a locking tool that goes in those holes right there, it's nearly impossible. That is the next thing I have to buy myself. But this is the way I actually remove the fin clutch. So it's gonna be really easy to actually install it because to install it, you gotta basically twist it on, you know, to the left like that, but we're not gonna be installing this garbage. So the way, the reason that they actually come together with a fan clutch is you can see there's no bolts like on the T1Ns and you cannot really reuse this fan clutch. So the only thing it could be good for is some kind of other project that requires some kind of movement with a clutch type of situation. And that's about it.